There is a chart circulating on X and people are outraged about this chart when they understand what is going on here. And here it is. It is a chart listing the price earnings ratio, forward price earnings ratio of the MAC 7. Forward means this year. And what it shows is that if you look at the MAC 7, the magnificent seven, the big stocks that drive the age of AGI, there is Meta that is currently the big, big discount stock at 21 times PE, which is ridiculously low, by the way. I'm a big fan of Meta because of that valuation, because I think Meta is actually now in a very good situation that they fired Lee Kun, the central obstacle to their success in AI. So I think Meta is underrated. But this is not the topic of today's video. The topic is the elephant in the room, which is on the left side, which is our favorite Tesla. And when you look at it, people say Tesla is completely, completely out of whack. It is completely overvalued. How can it be that in these magnificent seven stocks that define the future of AGI, how can it be that one of them, Tesla, is at 189x and the second largest, Apple, is at 30x? By the way, Apple is definitely overvalued because that is the one stock in these seven that has no AI strategy and has no chance of survival as one of the magnificent seven, at least. So that is what we are seeing here. And the big question I want to cover today is, is that completely nuts? What is happening with Tesla? Should we all sell all Tesla stocks and buy these much, much, much cheaper ones? Very powerful companies like Nvidia, for example, growing at 60% per year, 60% per year growth. Isn't that very impressive? Isn't that a better investment? That is the topic today. And in order to respond to, to respond to this question, of course, we can't just speculate and have narratives. No, we need actually a model. We need a real, real model. And I want to go into my updated model. You can see that on pioneerlands.net. Go to pioneerlands.net to see the model. Uh, I have a new version here, by the way, version 14.4.2, uh, not 14 point, that's FSD. My version is version 4.2 and there's changing uh, from, why does it say two? From version uh, V4.1. I made some changes that actually bring down the stock price, the 2030 stock price. This is a different video where we cover that, but I shifted everything back roughly nine months. So basically the previous 2029 target is now the 2030 target, which drops it quite a lot because I basically accounted a little more accurately for uh, the RoboTaxi scaling of the fleet side each year and the same thing for Optimus. But I don't want to bore you with that. We are going today into the exact thing that explains what is going on with the PE ratio. And I want to do that by simply quickly going through the model. And, you know, this is a function of basically revenue and price per earnings. and here is an interesting chart that I want to share with you guys to actually explain why Tesla is so crazy high valued. And you see here 2025, depending how you measure this, this is my, my actually current PE ratio, uh, based on the stock price that Tesla should have right now. So you have to discount that this is based on a roughly 600. I can give you the exact number this is basically based on a 500 dollars share price because i think tesla will go to 500 in december but let's see even if not if tesla goes to 500 the pa ratio will be roughly at 243 right okay so people will say that's crazy hey creating these videos is a lot of work please like and subscribe it really helps out the channel now let's get back to the video 243 this red line is the price earnings ratio for this year and in my projection based on the fair future value of that stock that is not even the crazy news the crazy news is that i believe the price earnings ratio will actually go up even more in 2026 to 257 to be more specific i future fair value is 894 dollars for next year and if we go to 894 dollars the price earnings ratio will go to 257. And so people will say, Joe, are you crazy? Just to go back to our little Mac 7 example, 
here you see what the problem is, right? You see what the problem is. Here are your make seven. It is at 189. I think it goes to 250, 240 this year, and then to 250 something next year. It's going even more crazy. Why? Why do I think that? So let's explain this a little more in depth. And when you look at this chart here, you will see exactly why. Because what do I have here? Here you see the PE ratio, but here you see the one year forward PE ratio, right? How do we get to this one year forward PE ratio? Well, we take this year's stock price, assuming it's 500, and divide it not by the 2025 earnings, but the 2026 earnings. And when you see that, you see already a very dramatic fall, right? If you would divide the current target stock price for 2025 by next year's projected earnings, in my model at least, suddenly you see that drop to 144 PE, okay? So that's already much cheaper than 243. If you do a two-year forward PE ratio, if you take the $500 share price and divide it by the 2027 projected earnings net income, then you're already at $73. How can we explain this? Why is that the case? Why is that the case? In other words, here is another chart that explains this a little differently, where you just see these three perspectives, the current price earnings, the current price to the current earnings, the current price then to next year's earnings, 2026, and the current price, assuming it's 500, the current price, to 2027 earnings. So it's the same numbers in a different display. And you see that's, if you look at that, you know, then suddenly, let me introduce here, by the way, uh, some labels so we can understand a little bit better what is going on. Data labels, boom. So let's do this here so you see the actual numbers so we see in 2025 if you zoom forward and divide the current projected year and share price of 500 by 2027 you're only talking about a 73 price earnings in 2026 the two year forward pe 2028 in this case in 2026 it will go down to 62 then 52 then 40 then 26 then 19 and then 15 okay so in 2031 the stock price will have a two-year forward price earnings ratio of 15. That's how conservative my model is. But 2031, the current PE will still be 57. What does it all mean? How can this even be explained that you see that massive drop of a price earnings ratio between the current earnings and two years forward earnings? Well, let's do some basic math here. This is like a little math test. Maybe 11th grade, I don't know, maybe freshman college math, you know master's financial math when you see a chart like that with very high current price earnings ratios where people say oh it's way too high but you see when you apply a two-year forward price earnings ratio that it drops dramatically what does it mean well we, if you keep the 500 dollars share price even for this year and divide it by something that makes it much smaller what's coming out of that that means that something you divide it by goes up dramatically and that something you divide it by is the earnings in other words this is a reflection of a stock that at least in my model and in the model, it seems of a lot of other people who are smart and analyzing the stock that the earnings of the stock go up dramatically. And this is my final chart I want to discuss today. Here is the secret. Here is the secret chart you need to understand when it comes to Tesla. And that secret chart shows you EPS, the earnings per share and EPS growth year over year by the different years. Now let's take a look. What actually happened to Tesla in 2024? In 2024, you had $2.40 earnings per share. And you actually saw a decrease of the earnings per share by 32% to 2023. In other words, Tesla was in shrinking mode. That's why the stock got so destroyed. EBIT, or net income to be more specific, was actually shrinking at a massive rate of 32%. In 2025, this year, we have a projected, maybe coming even lower than that, negative 20% from 2024. So after the shrinkage, we continue to shrink. In my opinion, 15%, but maybe it's going to be 20% to $2.1 per share EPS. Uh, so pretty bad. This is pretty bad. So this is a heavily shrinking stock, which makes this, of course, for everyone who's looking in the rear view mirror, even more absurd. How can a shrinking stock be at 189x 
earnings, when a stock that rises at 60% per year in income or in revenue, NVIDIA, is only at 24x. How can this even be? Well, here comes the explanation. If you model out what I and many other people believe is going to happen to Tesla starting as early as next year, you see a complete explosion of both EPS growth and then, of course, EPS. So the blue line is the earnings per share that I project based on RoboTaxi and Optimus, based on my updated scaling numbers. And what you see here is a complete insane explosion. We are going from $2.01. And 10 cents in 2025. This year, for every share you make $2.10, we are going up to $143 in 2031. That is crazy. Not that crazy when you look at the actual sales model and the revenue models and RoboTaxi and understand the underlying technologies, the underlying momentum, and the underlying infinite appetite of this globe, of the United States, of Europe, of China for autonomous transport, and you understand that FSD 14.3, that's probably coming out end of December, as early as four weeks, maybe in six weeks, will be supposedly the final breakthrough, the final piece in the puzzle for complete autonomous driving. You hail robotaxis all over the place, and they just drive to you. Tesla can churn these things out at one robotaxi every 30 seconds. For at the margin, at marginal costs, probably at $15,000 per robo taxi and makes as much as $30,000 in margin per year per robo taxi and can churn out millions and millions and millions of them. And we know that the demand is basically uncapped for now. So we are talking about a complete explosion. And then the second S curve coming in in 2029, 2030 to really scale to a million by 2030 and then way more, hundreds of millions very soon, Optimus humanoid robots. So my model basically takes this all into account. As you see, here's a very big, complicated model that basically has all these sales projections. For example, Optimus here, right? Here are the sales projections. Pretty conservative. I'm, I'm saying they're producing 100,000 Optimus, Optimi, whatever it is, the plural of the humanoid robots, 100,000 new ones in 2027, and then finally hitting a million new ones per year in 2027. 30. So this is not too crazy, my assumptions. Robotaxis, I'm assuming next year we are actually getting to 40,000. That is the big assumption here. But some people disagree. Many people agree. We will see. We're tracking this every day. By end of next year, I'm saying we have 40,000 robotaxis. And then most analysts agree, if that is the case, that you will get to 200,000 new robotaxis in 2027, 500,000, 2000. 2028, 1.3 million, and so on. And then you're off to the races where you, there's basically an enormous hundreds of millions of autonomous cars demand by 2040. These are the base assumptions. And if you project these base assumptions into earnings per share growth, you're getting to this all decisive chart. And this chart basically explains it all. Here you see an earnings per share growth that dwarfs NVIDIA by far dwarfs Microsoft, Google, even in the best possible outcomes for these companies. It dwarfs also Meta. It dwarfs them all. Because you're talking about a 70% EPS growth in 2027, a 97% growth following year in 2027, a 109% growth in 2028, again, 100% growth 2029, 109% growth again in 2030, and then 137% growth in 2031, and then we continue on a crazy rate that EPS growth. You now we can also look into here. It actually ends in 2031 for complicated reasons, but you're seeing that the growth is not even slowing down. It is accelerating when that second S curve comes on top of the robot taxis and the humanoid robots come on top. Now, is this all crazy? That is a topic for a different video where we dive deep into Optimus into the status, into the technology, into the crazy market of humanoid robots and other videos where we drive in a robo taxi. But here you see an accumulated perspective of the earnings per share growth and the earnings per share that go absolutely through the roof if things happen the way many, many people think they will in 2026. And given that whole situation, the stock is completely undervalued right now. The PE is not only justified, the PE should actually be higher 
this year and next year because of that dramatic rise in earnings. There you have it. That is a simple explanation why this year is not crazy, why the market is not as dumb as some people think, and why this thing is only a reflection of the back rear view mirror and not a reflection of the future. And once you project the future in it with all the knowledge, know-how, and precision we have, then you're getting to the conclusion that a price earnings ratio that looks at the current year can be highly deceptive. And in fact, in a rational market for trillion dollar companies like that, the market isn't as dumb as it looks on this slide. In fact, the market is pretty smart and understands that this year might be the reality we are moving into, a reality of 100% growth over the next five, six years, every single year of hard net income growth for Tesla. I hope that was interesting. See you tomorrow.